Hi everyone, Canada Day just passed and I decided to make an indigenous bow of the area I live in. I decided to make an Algonquin self bow. There's very few information about Algonquin style Ontario bows. Based on my research, these are typically unbacked bows due to the humidity here and uh, they are usually made of elm, maple, whatever hardwood they can get and the lengths are typically shorter than say an English longbow and usually they're flat bow designs so making a bow from the woods a maple maple wood from Algonquin Park I think makes it extra special I'm gonna use this and just gonna start grinding it it's a lot faster than using a rasp but I gotta be careful not to overdo it now that I grinded the bow enough with the power tool I think it's time to use the uh, the hand tools now because you don't want to screw up uh, maybe I can use the ball sander a little longer, but now you just gotta keep doing this. Two hands, obviously, but I gotta hold the camera. So I'm at the next step of the, the uh, bow making process. It's time to tiller the bow now. This is really the start of bow making. Before, you can count it as woodworking, but now you're really making a bow. So you can see the bending. They're bending about evenly, but I need to bend a lot more near the handle, not exactly at the handle, but right before the, right before the handle, and here at the tips I have to bend more. It'd be really nice to have a shape horse. So I'm at the stage where I don't want to take any more risks. It's rasping only. No more uh, spoke shave, no more draw knife. You just want to use the rasp to remove a little bit of material. Um, I've made the mistake before and when I used the draw knife it gouged too deep and it damaged the bow before. But now I've learned to take time, be patient and use two hands instead of holding the camera. Just like this. So I'm working on tillering the bow and you can see it's bending a lot near the tips. But at the center it's not bending at all so more bending near the center not too much though and more bending here so keep working at it no power tools don't use power tools and the shape 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 yeah it's still quite a lot the aboriginals in north america they pass down their bow making art by by mouth by showing their son how to make them by showing other villagers how to make the bows so there's no writing um, at least before the Europeans arrived about how to make these well look at that it's bending quite a lot now I, I'm confident that I can string the bow now well today I got the uh, bow strong with a two inch brace height <laughs> This still needs a lot of shaving near the grip. It's not bending much at the grip. Well, look at that. I think that's around 16, 18 inch draw length with a two inch brace height. The bow's really getting there. I need to start, I need to continue tillering. So here is a plant fiber string. This is a manila hemp and uh, not historical for uh, North America. This is in the Philippines. I don't have Indian hemp. They call it Indian hemp, which is dog bane. I don't have that with me right now. So I've tried the artificial sinew string. It didn't work well because it's made of nylon. It stretches a lot. So I'm using an organic hemp string, but this is manila hemp and it works great. But I think the brace height's a little too high for a wood bow, but you can see it's not stretching, but I hear some awful noises. I'm gonna shorten the brace height and we're gonna use this string. As you can see, here's my 26 inches. Forty three kilograms. Forty three forty two point five, so forty three kilograms at twenty six inches. That is a very heavy bow for 
So if it was at 28 inches, either the bowl breaks, string breaks, or um, if it all held, it would be above 100 and something pounds, which is kind of crazy for, uh, I think, for a flat bowl design. I should shave it more. Give it more shave near the handle. But right now I'm at the range. I can't really shave it more. So for this episode, let's just shoot it the way it is. I can shoot the draw weight. It's just I can't pull very far. At 26 inches, you really don't want to pull far. And with such a small brace height, it's going to be a little painful with such a small brace height. But I'm at the brain. Goes. <laughs> I am very surprised that the manila string held so well. Now accuracy, of course, right dead center. This is not a Dacron string, this is an organic hemp string, uh, manila hemp. But uh, it seems like manila hemp is working. It's just, it stretches. Originally it had a higher brace height, about 4 inches to 5 inches. But now it's shrunk to 3 inch brace height, which kind of sucks. I could, you know, uh, twist it more to reduce the brace height. But this is the thing with organic strings. I feel like it's a lot of tinkering to do. Oh! I'll be honest with you guys. This is my first time making an organic string. So um, I'm really learning here. And with manila hemp, it works, but it stretches. Every time I shoot it a few times, I have to twist it again. And before, you know, you got four inches of brace height, now it's shrunking back, yeah, three and a half-ish brace height. It's really annoying. Does this continue forever? I don't think so. I think eventually the stretching will stop. But being an organic string kind of sucks. sucks. The, this is um, manila hemp for the marine industry for, for boats. So I thought it would be a lot stronger than like craft store hemp. So this is the first part of, of the video where I attempt with the organic manila hemp string. And it works, it's just you gotta keep twisting it, which is really annoying, and the string's gotta be pretty thick. Now I think this bow's a little heavy for the Aboriginals here in Canada. I have a feeling they would have a little light, uh, le less draw weight than, you know, 100 pounds. Yeah, now I do find that the tertiary draw is really awkward at this draw weight, with the pinch draw, the tertiary, the Algonquin tertiary pinch draw, it's very awkward at this draw weight. Like here, let, I'll show you. Oh, it's hard to get that, to pull that. Ah, yeah, it, it's really awkward, guys. I wouldn't use the, the Gunkwin Tertiary Draw. I'd rather just use a standard Mediterranean Draw. Oh. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> but... <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's an awesome bow, honestly. I love the shooting. Even though I'm only pulling it to 25, 26 inches, um, I, I, don't, I don't dare to pull it further than that draw length for now. Um, anyways, this is the first part of the video. It's just my first time testing it with what I have. So my second video, I'm gonna improve what I have, obviously. I think the draw is a little too heavy for an uh, Algonquin bow. Um, also, the string material gets really restricted when you get heavier. Um, now I haven't tested sinew strings and I have a feeling sinew strings are a lot stronger or gut strings is a lot stronger than plant fiber strings. From what I've heard, plant fiber strings are used but they're generally only for lighter bows um, for the North Americans. Um, yes, the war bows use plant fiber strings but that's different. That's uh, in Europe, uh, that's totally a different kind of plant and the, the making techniques is very different. But you see, now the brace height is shrinking again. So now I have to take the string off and increase the brace height again. This is really annoying. So I have the string taken off. Okay, let's twist it a little bit more. So just keep doing this, keep doing this. This is probably gonna be a limit eventually. But I have a feeling uh, a lot of plant strings are like this. Maybe because the way they're manufactured. There, I twisted it. Let's do another shooting. Oh, 
You see how fast those arrows go? So after taking the string off, twisting it, taking the string off, twisting it, after a while, it seems like this manila hemp has settled. It has settled to this height, this brace height. It doesn't seem to shrink anymore. So maybe it, the string does have a limit of stretching and then it just stops shrinking. So that's nice. It's really annoying when it shrinks every time, but it's an awesome bow to shoot. Like it's just the draw length's a little too short for me, uh, 26 inch draw length. But we got to keep in mind, a lot of the North American bows don't shoot 28 inches because of the length. Look how short this bow is. Imagine how much it is at 28. It would probably be 120 or 100. I would probably break the bow. If, if I pull it to 28 inches, which I didn't want to. It doesn't need to. It's sh already shooting so fast. That's enough speed to hunt, I think. It's a little overkill in the draw weight. So in my next video, I'm gonna shave it, polish it, also finish it. Uh, the historical finishing they had was animal fat. So I could put bacon grease, or if I wanna make it look nice, just put linseed oil, um, or beeswax with uh, olive oil. That would be a European finish. But yeah, I think the draw weight is a little too heavy for a historical and bow. Uh, let's do Algonquin tertiary pinch draw. Oh. It's so much harder to do a pinch draw. I'm not used to it. I'm not trained with the pinch draw and pulling a hundred pounds with a pinch draw, not fun. Oh, and that string broke. <laughs> Manila hemp string broke. There you go. It really fascinates me how they make organic strings back in the day, but oof. And this is one of the strongest plant fiber strings. It broke. It's kind of sad, but the bow still functions, which is great. Yeah, that's why you see so, so many people use synthetic strings these days, because this stuff, it's not easy to make, eh?